Yes, welcome to our show, Cock and Bull. I have changed my seating position slightly. I have elevated myself on a pillow for two reasons. One, because I feel I'm closer now to people for some reason. And second, because of the pain in that part of the body which needs some soft cushioning. Uh, something I won't get into because I've been told it's awfully disgusting to discuss that right at the top of the show, but maybe towards the middle. Okay, uh, I have a beautiful piece of news before we bring in uh, Amit and Silvery. And that is... In Alibagh, where my wife lives, uh, that's how we keep the marriage going, I've discovered that the bucket bath is a fabulous concept and a great way for India to save water. And this message goes straight to the Prime Minister's office from me. Once again, dear patriot that I am, I've decided to help the country. And this is what I've come up with. If you find the right seating arrangement while having a bucket bath, because that's very key to it, you have to feel very comfortable. So your back should be resting against the wall generally if you're aged. And if you're younger, you can possibly get away with less. Uh, and you have to be at a perhaps knee height with a stool as well. Then fill the bucket with water, the requ requisite temperature, and uh, use only about three to four mugs at a time. All right? That's it. I, I don't think you need one, three to four mugs to, for a full bath. I've tried it. You know, one here, one there, one there, one, you're done. It's pretty simple. But then the rest of that water, you keep it there. It gets cold. In the next bath you have, you heat a little bit of water only. So you do mix and match and you're still using the water that's there in the bucket. This is my gift to the Prime Minister's office. And uh, I presume I will get a congratulatory message. May get on the list of honours. Hopefully, this time, the Padma Bhushan and Vibhushan will be given to the right people. I don't want to go on and dwell in it too, too long, but this is just my message. As the light changes, and for some reason, I'm not able to control that, let's call in on Cock and Bull, the glorious talent of Silvery, also known as Antariksh, and Amit Doshi, who wasn't in for the sound check at 5.58. A sense of... Absolute arrogance uh, and of returning to the office, I think. As you can see, I they're in an office. sitting in a studio. What do you expect from me? I don't need wow. no sound check. Wow. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're sitting in a studio. <laughs> now be even more arrogant and say it's your own studio. <laughs> Do you remember in our neck of the woods, there's a my own studio where we all used to go and get our photos oh, taken yeah. many, many years ago. Yeah. Yes, yes. They had the back room where you had to go and they do like family portraits and shit like that. Correct, yeah, I do correct. remember that place. Right. Opposite Chicken Center, Nana Chok. My own studio. I've always wondered why couldn't he come up with a better name than Kya Nam Rakho? Uh, my own studio because it's his. All right. But uh, what is our studio called? Our studio is called the IVM Studios. That's boring. Let's give it a name. All right. You want me to give it a name? I will think yeah. about it. No, it should always have a female name. A name uh, uh, Apeksha or something. It should have a nice like, oh, name, ring to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have like multiple studios, right? So each of our studios can be called like an interesting name of itself. So like we are in Studio uh, Alpha, a a Studio, you know. Alpha, Alpha. 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 <laughs> there will be hot, yeah. hot sounding women. Uh, so that, you know, every glamour <laughs> uh, thing attached to it immediately. Wow. Are you, okay. My own studio. I mean, who wants to go there? It sounds like a government job from hell. If I were yeah. to pick what we would do, I would probably. So like, you know, a common thing to do is like. Uh, so Pratilipi, right, the company that acquired us in Bangalore, all of their different conference rooms are cities from fantasy novels. So they oh, have wow. like, I think, a like Rivendell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rivendell, yeah. Huh? Rivendell, Rivendell. Like from Rivendell, Lord of the Rings. Okay. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they have Malgudi from R.K. Lakshman Malgudi as one so, of the rooms. Uh, so I, I can't hey, remember the other names. But I thought that was what cool. about Bombay, which is supposed to be Shanghai? That's also like a <laughs> fictional thing. So that's what Apple has in their India offices, in their Bombay offices. Their Bombay offices, each of the conference rooms are a international city name. So I'm going but to have a conversation in San Francisco. But does it have a connection in <laughs> the name? Or you just chose a name you no, like? No, no, it's just they, they just have, they just have different cities as far as I know. Wow. All right. Uh, what about Pawai? Shouldn't we call one of the students Pawai? So you don't miss home. Two years. No, no. No? I, I will only go play Star and call Pawai now, man. I don't want it to be called Pawai. Two years of Pawai, god damn it. Yeah, okay, uh, speaking of, of uh, bucket baths, did you guys, tell me honestly, when's the last time you had a bucket bath? You spoiled Urban uh, Two years, back continuously for two years in boarding school, but that was the last time, literally. Uh, but I was, two I was years like, back in boarding school? Standard. So when you were 26, yeah. you went back to boarding school. You creep. What no, were you no, doing there? Like was... the young boys. <laughs> <laughs> I said back when there. Yeah, yeah. At uh, 14 years of age. So those were bu bucket bath days. You at 10th. Yeah, so and fast, dude, fast. in boarding school, everything in boarding school is you have to put yourself in a line for it. So uh, because there aren't enough buckets to go around our dormitory, there are 32 people in the dormitory. We don't have 32 buckets. We have only like eight buckets. So there is a line for everything. Like tere baad mere ko de, tere, tere bucket. Don't give it to someone else. And there would be fights. <laughs> If the bucket, I saw that bucket in someone else's hand, I would fight to the death with this dude. I was like, dude, I told you, it was my bucket. Many and questions, that applied many to everything. questions. 
Yeah, no, but yeah, let's stay with the buckets for a minute. So, would you then yeah, yeah. share the bucket? Was that an option? <laughs> you guys have a bath together. That had that did happen. So, uh, how dormitories way uh, the washroom area how it works is uh, one side is the the WC areas, okay, and the other side other the partition, and the other side is a wash basin area, and behind that there's like a small area where you can gather, and behind that is the uh, like the showering area. I'm what I described makes it sound like a very big washroom, but it wasn't. It was like it just barely enough. It sounds like a concentration people. camp to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> not, it's not. It's not. <laughs> uh, oh. So very often, if all the four showering areas or uh, whatever, like bucket bath areas, are not uh, available, like the rooms, the compartments, then we would just, you know, we were always in a hurry, so we would just uh, bathe in like the open area with all the other guys. And uh, no, very often, so, 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 so there's one bucket and four guys, like it would be like that sometimes. There's no number, it could be eight guys in but, one bucket, you know. <laughs> like, the mug you know. And, <laughs> so who decides who gets the mugs and all that? Uh, we so basically, like, we literally share, like, basically, everything is it's boarding school. We literally see each other, we next to each other, but then, but then your, your and... pal does he pour, pour the mug on you as well? Because that's how the thing can escalate, no? <laughs> no, luckily, <laughs> like, not. Go, no, that's go, not, you know, can you just you whatever. I was just asking. No, no, it could not, be innocent. It could be no. innocent. Just to kill. I mean, how you would with anything like sports equipment or something? How you would share it literally? Yeah. Wow. Listen, bro. I got a piece of. Yeah. I've got. A, I've, got this it. is what I'm. My summarize summarizing from this whole situation for you is that for stand up, when you return to a proper venue and play your own thing, you must do dom uh, life in the in Panchgani, whatever. You, you must do a whole yeah. sequence of that. I think it'll be really funny. You're writing it down. Excellent. Yeah, yeah I'm writing it down. So don't forget, Cyrus said this is funny. No, no. I'm telling you, you can, you can, you can give us. Firstly, they're all true stories, which you can obviously, yeah. uh, you know, do your thing with. But they're really funny. I'm just thinking about the yeah, experiences. Yeah, now they're funny. They're, they're both ridiculous and funny. But it's, so I'm my just school, right? it. These are all upmarket kids, sort of stuck in this stupid place absolutely. with one bucket, two mugs, <laughs> and they're all looking at each other, stark naked, yeah. and they're adolescents yeah. who can only think of women all day and all night. And you know, I'm just thinking, it's just, it's, it's like criminal in many ways. So, <laughs> Absolutely. So, talking about women, right? Women in school it was a co ed boarding school. It was Sanjeevan Vidyala in Panskani. And uh, but we. You couldn't shower not... with the girls. No, no, of course not. Of course not. No, no. Uh, not like that. You're... You put so in my, the my school had three campuses. My school had three campuses. One friend. minute! They were LGBT had already reached Panskani well before the movement. What the hell? No, no, it wasn't. Amit, we... congratulations to Sanjeevan. What a society. <laughs> Super, bro. Super. I'm no, no. Really you, are, you are completely in the wrong direction because. You my three. my school my school could not no no my my I was saying my school has three campuses. Uh, the first campus uh just was for the lower grade like uh, I think till eighth standard. The second campus was oh. for ninth tenth. Oh, and third campus was for eleventh and twelfth. Got it. Got yeah it. yeah so got like it. that. Uh, so anyway, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, my school was so uh not progressive. They would have problems <laughs> if we were talking to girls. If we were even talking to our own classmates. My, my class teachers were like, uh, have a problem. I remember very famously, we had a Singh sir. He was a Hindi teacher. And his famous question was, when you're, if you're talking to a, uh, uh, another girl, right? He'd come and ask you, are you, are you, are you boyfriend or girlfriend? And you'd be like, what are you supposed to say to your teacher? And they're like, no. And he's like, what are you talking I'm like, no, you're talking about it. Like, what are you talking about, dude? No, I get it. He wants the bond. What is the bond is his question, which he, he said it wrongly <laughs> by friends. giving you the options. You should say, my neighbor, ki dhobi, ka ban, ki auntie. You have to just find oh, something else what the, what the connection <laughs> like is. Any That's relation will do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have to do uh, Pajigani tales over. I don't want to do tales on boarding school. <laughs> How yeah, we yeah. share the bucket. Your bio could be the bucket tales. It would be fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so a whole different uh, feeling to bucket list for him, Bichara. Um... No, but I, oh, I just uh, one sec. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, one more thing yeah, I rem yeah. just remembered. Very cheap about my boarding school, okay? So my boarding school, <laughs> mess food in boarding schools is famously bad, right? Famously, we all know this. Mess food is always bad. Uh, um, on uh, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, we used to get non-veg, okay? Uh, so I was there for 2, 9, and 100. We used to get non-veg Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Uh, in the last six months of my tenure there, of the last six months of my 10th standard, they made all non-veg days into egg days. Like egg gravy days, dude. So I was eating eggs on non-veg days, okay? And so Sundays was normally biryani day. Uh, so we used to get like mutton biryani, sometimes prawn biryani they, was also was a, a, They made it under budget, biryani, dude. But why budget issue? What biryani? is the issue? What, what? It must be budget what issue. Is, what is the issue? Why did they do that? Yeah, I don't know. I think they've just been super cheap because uh, uh, the yeah. the fees was exorbitant because the boarding. Yeah, schools... it was. It's boarding schools yeah. are not cheap. 
Yeah. So, so yeah. Me, I, that's what I, yeah. I don't understand that. The parents pay through their nose. Like, uh, Beta is very well taken care of and lap of luxury. And the mother sharing yeah. a bucket with seven boys you've never seen before. <laughs> Starkers <laughs> fighting for a mug. You know, I mean, that's part one. Then he gets for non veg They fool him into undercurry every day. Yeah. Non veg, and it's undercurry. <laughs> no, but that I, I think that's part of the boarding school thing, right? I mean, like parents who are typically in India, at least, right? And this is my uh, experience from my age, right? You send to boarding school the kids who are almost always the worst behaved, who need quote unquote straightening out, right? That's Ooh. the kind of thought that at least I know amongst. No, no, I mean, I mean, it's not just that. There were many who yeah, yeah. their divorces happened and things like that. Then there were, uh, you know, they couldn't handle kids, honestly. And then, right. were, like my my uh, wife, I was going to say daughter, but she's now my oh. wife, not my daughter. Please, <laughs> I apologize for that mistake, but it's all over the place in my head. Uh, no Freudian slip. Uh, so she, uh, the, the dad was in the corporate line, and he would he was oh. quite high up, but with every promotion in ITC, I think he would go to like from Calcutta to Hyderabad, etc. Et because they traveled a lot, they said let's give them some stability because otherwise every two right. years we're moving. So you know, it's those kind of yeah. kids also who go in. And uh, this, I think his silvery story is very similar, right? Silvery dad moved a lot. Uh, yeah, my dad had a ta- transferable job. He go. had a go- government job. So, so he was not the worst kid in the. Were you the worst kid in the area? No, no, not at all. Not at all. This is, uh, fine. this is the guy yeah. who says, "Ma'am and sir" to people who are six months younger than him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's no, the man but, who always had the bucket bath last. He's still going to tell us when he's going to see. There might be up. something to what Amit is saying though, because oh. I had a friend uh, who had been in that boarding school. So the boarding schools are usually art first and second standard. The third standard onwards, because the kids are a little older, they can stay away from the parents a little bit, right? I had a friend who had been in the boarding school from third standard. And he finished the 12th standard in the same boarding school. Okay. That means for the entire, those, uh, whatever, seven, eight years, nine years, he had I never celebrated count. his birthday at home. And he had never what celebrated his birthday. school teach you? Third to 12th? It's 12 minus yeah. three. <laughs> okay. Sorry. But he never Go celebrated on, like, his birthday with his parents and all, man. Isn't that like his entire Ooh, childhood? Yeah. Why? That is uh, just because they, they, birthday was always during school time, like school year, uh, like during the yeah. term, you know? But they wouldn't come to visit and all on the birthday. You know, actually, at least okay, maybe they came sometimes. They didn't come when I was there. Uh, maybe they came sometimes. You're right. Uh, but at least he was he was never at home for the morning school. And I I remember asking him. So you've never been home for your birthday? Like no, I've always been here, man. My entire, every every year birthday year I'm always here. Was his father the principal? Uh, no, it was. He wasn't. No. <laughs> wow. So there's some sad I, stories I, also. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, no. So that's just that. The, the, those are the kind of people who I who I know who went to boarding schools, right? For the most part, hmm. these were kids who, like, you know, did some uh, really either messed up shit or you're right. Divorce was a thing, right? I think because of divorces, there were a number of kids I know who went to boarding school. But it was almost. Uh, but uh, I think because of that, there was a certain tolerance built into parents' expectations. Right, the idea that hey, this is meant to toughen up our kids. This is meant to straighten up our kids, right? So yeah. even though you're paying these exorbitant fees, the parents would probably be like, hey, you're supposed to go there and get your shit sorted out, right? Like the mm-hmm. uh, dude, basically the same advice I was giving you off camera about how to deal with Mikhail's thing that we were talking yeah. about last week. You know, yeah. it's basically the same point, right? Get them and to straighten then, their shit out. And let me tell you, you failed. And my biggest problem, <laughs> my biggest problem is, and my fight with my wife is because it's like it's like two cultures. You no, know, she's the boarding school tougher culture. They are well organized, do everything on their own. And I'm the ladla culture for sure. I'm still with my parents, and I still ask my mom to go and tell them to shut the drilling. My old eight year old mother has to go and intercom and tell them. You know, we still that still goes on. And and, and the problem is that we are so soft as a result of that. Uh, that oh. when my son left. I'm still, you know, I look at his Gatorade bottle, which he uses, uh, which he used to mix his drink in and all that. And I start feeling sad and almost teary and all that. So what level we're on? And these ones left their homes at you know, age of nine or 10, whatever it is, third standard. Yeah. And then they're like, you know, they're, they're just so much tougher than us emotionally. Mm-hmm. Like my wife. Yeah. That's why I made her the husband. I anointed her. Just the other day I said, you're the husband now. <laughs> so the fact that now, you know, uh, the, the facial growth and all that is um, it's a lovely girl and all that, but it's just part of nature. We're all basically the same gender. Once you cross 45, 45, 46 is the same gender. Silver, you've got 15 years to enjoy distinct changes in gender. After that, we are very, very secular. Really. Yeah. But I I just want to finish on the bucket bath before we start any topics. I hope you guys remember that it's actually a great way to save water and you can actually do real paisa vasool because you won't waste it. If I give you only five or six mugs worth of water, you probably can tell us from Panjagani as well. uh, You make sure it counts. You don't have extra water throws and all. You make sure your water goes everywhere. You count for everything. You clean yourself thoroughly if there's an area which has to be cleaned more and boom and you're out. 
So I think the Prime Minister should now, Akshay Kumar must make a film instead of Toilet on Bucket. Maybe they can call it Balti or whatever they want to. And just focus on that. And all Indians should have bucket baths and use only four to five mugfuls at a time. I, I really don't see the reason to use more if you're careful. It's a slow process. You pour it, boom, boom, boom. It goes everywhere. You're clean. And if you're anti-soap like I am, you know, you don't have any excuse. You don't take anything off. Okay. But pause as the other two digest the information, then say, why do we all yeah, yeah, a little bit. And it's uh, like, you know, it, the, it's too much information. <laughs> the anti-soap thing was just, uh, that yeah. came out of nowhere. Wait, wait, you mean no shower gel, be, no body wash, nothing like that? So in the gym in the morning, I use that little bit of that shower gel under the armpit area because I try to keep oh. it as clean as possible. But I don't, I don't <laughs> like the feeling of soap on me. Can I tell you something? And please correct me in the in the chat. Anyone who wants to right now, I feel the touch of soap is like semen, and it's not like I'm homophobic, but some of that soap, I just feel a very semenic touch to it. And so what? it's a tactile issue. It's a, maybe from childhood or something. I never enjoyed that tactile thing. But if you put me in a bubble bath, I'm okay with it. I love the bubble baths. Bubble baths are disgusting. Lying in your oh own filth. God. Oh my God. I Dude, can't believe you're, it. Seriously, you're, divided. You're, you're, They're a country you're, divided. You're cleaning yourself off into the thing that you're lying in. I'm sorry, but a bubble bath without a shower at the end of it is Of course you have a shower at the end of it, Amit Doshi. You have a shower at the end of it, but that's not... But you don't like showers. Only you don't like soap. You, you need to soap. But I, you need to but clean I, yourself off. I only do bubble baths in hotels because we don't have the feature here. Plus, if anybody sees me in the, in the bath for one hour singing, you know, things will you know, get out of control very quickly. <laughs> um, and in the hotel, I can leave the door open. Sometimes the TV is also inside the bathroom. Sometimes you can see it through a mirror. So, you know, you guys know. So, there's, the, the, that's when I miss being a bachelor. I mean, I'm a rich bachelor. Maybe being rich and a bachelor <laughs> go together. They correlate. You need to do both together, honestly. So, make your money, boys, while you can and enjoy it. After that, you're going to have bucket baths for the rest of your life. <laughs> can you imagine? That's why, what's his name? Bill Gates broke up at the end of the day. He couldn't take the bucket baths anymore. <laughs> no, we must save some money, Bill. Go back. Only four mugfuls. Damn you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, let's get to our topic number one for the day. We've yes, got some short. bizarre, by the way, people listening, we've got some bizarre topics today. It's and I have no a, idea what they are. So this is so it's not be, these aren't your classic uh, hit you in the face uh, headline news. Uh, these are let's you'll take some time to digest each one. Let's see. Silvi. Yeah. All right. The first one, instance, for instance, comes from Canada. This is uh, a Canadian woman has become the first person in the world, first people in the world to be diagnosed with climate change. Okay, so she has she's facing some breathing breathing issues. She has asthma as a pre-existing condition. She is suffering from diabetes. She also has a heart condition. But the doctor she went to has diagnosed her with climate change, saying that the overarching problem is climate change that you are suffering from. And then there are smaller issues or whatever, like more like issues that arise from climate change. Uh, so, but that's so the first it's, person it's... in the world to do this. Forget this. Okay, so it's going to that area where people get asthma because of the highly polluted areas they're in. Then they ask to go to hillside areas where there's less pollutants, etc. So it's going from that, starting from that area. So Amit Doshi, let's see where you go with this one. Are you cynical or are you are you are you able to see the point? So what I will say is that this doctor is the reason why people hate liberals. That's all I have to say. I told you. I told him. I could think this was what Amit would. Yeah, uh, that, that's all I have to say, right? This is this this guy is the reason. He he is the reason why people with the positions that most of us generally hold, the three of us at least generally hold, right, are hated by so many people. Because mm -hmm. my God, what what are you talking about? I mean, like seriously, this is this is nothing but a political comment, right? Because climate change yeah. cannot be even used to say that certain things have happened. You can't even attribute. If weather events to climate change, you can't attribute changes in geography to climate change yet because climate change, we know it's happening, but the effects are still kind of, you know, being played out. And for him to do so this, indirectly, you can. Indirectly, you can. You can see such and such has caused less uh, oxygen in the atmosphere. Hence, asthma is prevalent or whatever is prevalent, breathlessness. No, or, I don't, so you, I, indirectly, so... you can find a reason. I, I think, Cyrus, it's the preponderance of things, right, that are happening at this point in time on a climate perspective, which makes us believe that climate change is a real thing, right? And I believe climate change 100% is real. But to, when you cannot even attribute the fact that XYZ hurricane happened because of climate change, you cannot attribute this directly right now. How the fuck are you attributing an illness to this? Also, why are there more cases? <laughs> and an illness of, a, well, sorry, illness of a person Nobody who's else. suffering from what? Diabetes, heart disease. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. what, is there some cancer? All regular there? ailments. Yeah. There's no cancer. Hey, all the uh, all the stuff there. But she lives I, in a trailer, she, so maybe that's also part of it, a disease. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but absolutely. Keep in mind, this is Canada, one of those A-grade countries. So sometimes the doctor is just not affected by the kind of patients. Maybe you'll see on a bad day in Raipur during the summer, where lots of people have diarrhea, for example. So he's not used to those kind of flesh and blood cases. So he now, out of sheer boredom, says, "What the hell? Let me make a breakthrough here and find something new because I can't deal with colds, coughs, people feeling." cold maybe pneumonia there's not too it, much more perhaps in his line yes my should, my good friend with should, the bucket box yeah it should be mentioned though that uh, canada right now is going uh, through some of the worst heat waves it has ever seen and which are being attributed to climate change and because uh, she went to the doctor during this heat wave time I think that could be a part of everything climate i'm i'm a victim of climate change i had to buy thermals for my son i'm a victim yeah. The wife screamed at me, he's going to freeze to death, blue, blue, blee, blee, blah, blah, blah. And then she's now he's so hot that I need to meet that doctor. Yeah. yeah. Save a little money. It's a, they bleed you. If these, you meet these the things. If you're meeting the doctor, smack him down a couple of times because this is just stupid, right? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, climate change is real. Please don't put these kinds of, when, you know, there's this concept around, uh, like when it comes to laws and stuff like that, right? That basically you should not make laws which people are not going to follow. Right, making like making the speed limit too low, uh, make uh, just like you know the dumbass laws that we when break on a day-to-day -day basis. Essentially, yeah, you should not make laws like that. Why? Because it promotes disrespect to the law. This is the same thing over here. Climate change is real. It's a problem. It's an issue. It needs to be looked at. It needs to be tackled. It needs to be solved for. And to kind of use it in this way basically makes the whole like you know it, it, it's it, it's so ridiculous. It it just turns everybody, it, it makes, like, you know, it gives the people who are against the idea or who basically deny the idea of climate change. I don't think you can be against, but you can deny the idea of climate change, right? It gives them such a stupid argument or such a stupid incident to dunk on, right? It's basically, yeah, next you say heart attacks happen because of climate change, all right. You, you know, it, it just turns into like that kind of thing, right? It's just so stupid. But maybe there's more to meet the uh, that meets the eye. Where basically, basically, he's not getting paid enough. He wants a private practice. He's sick of his uh, people claiming insurance and nothing else. Can't make more sure. money than required. So maybe he's just trying to, uh, you know, break the ceiling, the glass ceiling for himself, and open the doors, the floodgates. Because if he can prove to those 12 percent or 2 percent of nutcases out there that they could have climate change itis, then you know, I mean, he's going to be for, for a little while. He's going to be really rich, and maybe you know, rich enough for the rest of his life. Yeah. All he needs is 50,000 people to say, yeah, wow, you, this is what I've got. They come and meet the same doctor. He, he's ridiculous uh, <laughs> answers. To, you have to go to Nepal and sit on, on the Kanchanjunga for 25 minutes every day, except Wednesday. And then you come back and you'll be okay. The climate change is not affected as badly there as it is here. Blah, blah, blah. By the way, I wish they, they focus on finding the, what do they call the Yeti in Canada? Sasquatch. 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 Sasquatch, I'm searching. This is one of my dreams. My, we were talking about bucket list the other day, I think, on the last uh, Cock and Bull, maybe, or one before that. And I want to find the Yeti, or whatever the cultural uh, name is across the world. Yeah, I do want to. I, yeah. If anybody has any idea where to start or has some sort of clue and can tell us exactly a little bit more about where the Yeti was last seen and give us a little description, I think. Silvi, what do you think? You, me, and a bucket. Off we go. Uh, won't be enough, I don't think. <laughs> uh, yeah, you no don't think you can lure him in the yeah. times of climate change to come out of that area before it becomes a warm zone <laughs> and then give him a nice bath where we all share one mug? You, me and the Yeti, <laughs> Uncle Yogesh. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure there are lots of, like, you know, I mean, like these uh, people who are believe in these conspiracies, a lot of them like take this stuff seriously. And again, I don't think that the, I don't know that the Yeti is necessarily a conspiracy, right? Because the possibility of it existing, right? Yeti, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever you want to call it, right? It's there, right? I mean, it's unlikely at this point in time that such a large mammal could be undiscovered, but it's possible. Hmm. Also, there so, could be a gray I mean, area somewhere between a gorilla, a bear, and a. Uh, and this is, species has been slightly undiscovered because we we have in the recent past discovered species of animals here and there. So it's, it's possible there's large. something large. Not this yeah, large. Yeah, but huh? it's. Bro, I've been to the Himalayas. They're huge. Yeah. It takes a long time to go through the entire. I mean, like, three countries. Have you guys. So. Uh... The I was watching something about the the giant squid which lives like in like the deepest of deepest of the oceans, right? And the largest uh, giant squid which has been found up till now is like some fifty two to fifty five feet. Yeah, fifty five feet, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
and uh, but they are saying there are very possibly much larger uh, giant squids that exist but they just haven't been found because it's such a large ocean so oh, hence, we have this can't be called a giant squid this is called a medium squid because we're expecting a bigger squid to follow <laughs> but, but coming back yeah. coming back to this other uh, theory things what about what do you guys think about those anti holocaust theory guys who say there is another uh it obviously yeah happened. dude I'm, I think it is, 11 million Jews in in Europe before 32 1932 and about 5 odd million left who had uh, obviously left because they ran away and got got away from the murderous grip of the Nazis so how do you oh. deny the holocaust <coughs> we have the because... concentration camps we've got pictures we've got uh, memories of uh, just now the generation is gone you know up to say 20 years back there were people who could talk really clearly about it now of course it's more from the generation that's not been affected directly No, but, but, but people it, say it's, there's no holocaust it's history denialism right it's the same thing that we see like it's all over the In world yeah some of the battles say that i we change the that. scorecard we change it, the scorecard we don't deny completely we change the scorecard uh, yeah. no there's denial too in plenty of places there's denial there is also uh, complete fabrication right planes in ancient times i mean like this is fabrication right so there's there were it's changing history right i mean like uh, <coughs> uh do you guys uh, have you heard of that book i'm trying to remember the name right now but it's basically the history of the world written from the perspective of uh peasants and slaves and serfs and the, uh, all of the reverse that. story yeah the reverse the story con- right? the conquered ones basically yeah the, exactly right and so the uh, the the fact is that when you even read some of those things right which are many of them are like you know they're really really kind of uh, tenuous in terms of how factual or how traditional history will give you the uh, uh, will give you this kind of information or what information you are is very kind of like secondarily derived information but even when you look at the information which is derived from that primary information you can still mm-hmm. see this big pers- difference in perspective means that basically the facts change when the perspective changes that that's the word I think it's very. I mean, we just have to get down to it. the fact of the matter is, if you don't have perspectives, different perspectives, and all the possible perspectives to find an average mean to make it a little mathematical sounding, but I think it needs to be that. Otherwise, you cannot get a clear idea. The famous Rashomon and all these films and all which which tried the idea of showing uh, you know different perspectives. I, I mean, when you really look at it, it can be absolutely black becomes white when you change the you look from so and so's point of view. you know yeah. uh, for example when i was wrong in my perspective was all over the place i have danced with a woman who turned out to be a man i, I and i'm again not homophobic but these things happen because yeah. my perspective was rearranged so to speak and there were pictures taken by some of the boys and they, till today they gather around a campfire and look at them and laugh uh, especially if someone is terminally ill it's something they do to cheer them up um <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to silvery story number 2 Yeah, so that right. is the climate change uh, and if anyone is listening has any proof that someone is suffering from climate change itis for a lack of a better word right now please fill us in with this information amit is ready to fight you silvery uh-huh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right uh, next one comes in from uh, so basically uh, there are a lot of this kind about dating apps right nowadays about people are able to understand what works and what doesn't work okay and uh, so one new study has come out which says that uh men who put the dog pics in their profiles are uh more likely to want more like longer relationships it's because uh showing dependence so like a, a man who wants a relationship he will show a dependent like child uh who is a dependent uh, or a dog hey, incidentally you know, incidentally the dog is there or he's showing the dog specially no it'll be maybe himself with the dog but there is a dog on in the profile there maybe a dog pic somewhere okay. else you know but like prominently shown because uh, that uh, for women apparently shows that this man is uh, able to take care of someone else able to yeah you uh, know this is a very good point i want to write it down for kunal because in when we made his profile we put a picture of him with a watermelon and got nobody even wrote back so maybe there's something in you know it's important the second character is playing a stronger role than the first character <laughs> when, when we can't sell the first character uh but to on a more serious level I, i think the main thing is that when you see a pet and a male you know the nurturing side is there which is always a questionable side to the well i mean obviously there's no proof that it's really there but it appears to be there because the dog is there so i i i i give you a trick to those people who are youngish males if you have dogs you can borrow a dog it's very easy to start a conversation with a female uh, of the other gender rather uh, because they sort of trust you when you have a dog i've always noticed that i mean do you do you accept this that when you're um, with your dog people 
uh, from the other gender don't think of you as a threat as a creepy person you're less your creepiness comes down a bit uh, it's the so, same thing of course even better if you have a kid but the, the dog it does help as you know i learn everything i know in life from crime novels and yes. according to crime novels this is true Listen, there is, uh, if crime because... novel says climate change causes disease, uh, then, you know, that's it. We, yeah, we don't and, argue the matter. There we must be a people. lot of dogs in crime novels because detectives and yeah. dogs and sniffing yeah. and all, you know. Yeah, no, they talk about this, right? They Basically, they talk yeah. about how uh, a lot of serial killers who are trying to abduct women basically have a dog and that's how they, that, that's what they use to lure the women in. And the reverse. I mean, I've just been on YouTube. Uh, I love I, I don't want to use the word love, it just sounds wrong. I don't enjoy, I'm interested in listening to serial confessions, serial murder, murders confessions. And so while going to this whole confession of this one guy who had killed 11 women and uh, two kids actually, and then 20 years later, 11 women, uh, just uh, other, Rochester, which is near the Canada border, New York. Um, and they caught him when they, they basically a sniffer dog found him from some clothing that was left at the scene of the crime, oh. etc. And of course, they didn't talk much about that. And I was just thinking, what a great role the dog played, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, would, something that would take years and so many people and manpower and money and publicity and fear in the area, blah blah blah. And 15 minutes, the guy dog picked up the scent and, and caught the guy, went to, went to the house. But then, of course, it took some time to you know beat out a confession that that all followed later. So, yeah, sorry, I said what you were saying, yeah. So uh, another thing is that the second most popular dependent to show, at least for males, was a cat. Okay, uh, obviously, but yeah. the thing is, uh, cats were less successful in getting uh, like a match because uh, men who show cats are uh, seen as less masculine or more feminine in nature than uh, men who show dogs. That's feminine. what the study kind of was able to conclude. Another another something was that this is this though everyone knows, but uh, uh, topless selfies don't work, or uh, because men usually think that uh, oh I'll show like my abs and I'll get like all the matches that I can, but that is the least true statement. They will get the least matches if they have uh, a topless selfie, and same applies for fancy cars. Okay. If you have like, also cars, remember what, what then you're likely. Also. But what you're saying is this initial thing, huh? This is the initial uh, meeting thing where too yeah, much yeah, information absolutely. is a killer. You can't show your abs. Generally, that, that that's disgusting for a lot of... I can imagine even reverse uh, of that would not work, perhaps. Uh, mm -hmm. Car sounds like a show-off, generally. Unless you have a really yeah. bad car and then you're having fun with it. And then, and then she can see the humor in that. You know, like uh, Archie Andrews' is Jalopy. Jalopy yeah. Take a Fiat and like do a sports car pose with it. That kind of thing. Yeah, that that, that I would that tongue and cheek thing would be okay, I yeah. suppose. But uh, if you do an initial thing, it's a way I've never done it, but I'm just thinking it must be so much pressure. It's like the constitutions. You want to be rigid and flexible. You want to be right there in the middle. You want to show enough so that you're interesting and not can't be so self-deprecating that you know that's all there is to it because then you've said nothing. So you've got to find a sort of path where you are presenting something, but you cannot show off, be vain, be narcissistic, all that. So I think it'll be a very hard one to be. So in any case, there's not much you can do. You're, you're, you're on a bad path. <laughs> most, and that's why most of the time people reject people. That's how it works. But I, but, uh, I don't know, the dog and the cat thing, I mean, why would they make a judgment on that? They might just, if, you're a, if I'm a dog person, then immediately there's a little kindred spirit. So initially that could help set up a relationship for a little while. I can see that, but I can't see reading so much in the subconscious and the subtext. Like, oh, nurturer, lovely, kind, beautiful, manly, Adonis, has his dog with him, alpha male. I don't know, these are, this is too much for me. Uh, Amit, you, you, what do you think? I think uh, I agree with you, right? I mean, uh, no, I don't agree with you, actually. I, I would disagree with you. Are you drinking? Uh, no, I'm this not. This is worse well, than Hamlet. To be or not to be? Coffee. Oh, okay. No, I, 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 I disagree with you. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I think that there oh, is... Yeah. Sorry? We should... The yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think that there is definitely a... Uh, Connect. There's, there, from a there, there's, there's a connection. Thing. Well, no, it's not just a crime novel thing, right? The, the crime novel is like, you know, infallible and it's always correct, but it's not the crime novel thing, right? Uh, it, it it makes sense if you think about it, like just from a, uh, like there's this evolutionary theory, right? About like what men look for and what women look for and like, you know, how this stuff kind of plays out, right? And so it kind of makes sense if you, if you look at that. Okay. But then think yeah. of the breed of dog also. Maybe, I maybe take, this, take the GSD over the palm. And I love poems. So one of you guys like, Chalukun da, Chalukun da, baro, baro, baro. Huh. Okay. Uh, so we we'll take a break, guys. It's 6 yes, we'll take a break. Half a topic done let's as take usual. take a break. Yes. Is there any announcement that needs to be made? No, no. All done. We're, we're oh, good great. Today. Excellent. Wow.
let's do an ad for our show. Please subscribe yes. to this channel. Please like and subscribe. And and the point is, we don't even want you to actually like. Just do this like we're your NGO or someone you want to help. <laughs> and just just lead a helping hand. You know, you don't have to actually do anything. Not even watch it, but just subscribe. Right? So will that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm I think think get into my own mind yeah. because I hate people telling me what to do. You know, because that rebellious streak comes in and then, you know, so I'm... But if you ask for help, that's different. Yeah. No, but I, they should like, they should subscribe. And I think most importantly, right, they oh, should God. tell somebody, they should tell somebody about the podcast. Tell, yeah, pass on the information. Yeah, And, and don't yeah. do it in a secretive manner. This is not China. <laughs> you can you can actually tell them. For now, it's not China. But, you know, I think you guys have hit the nail on the head with the dog thing. Because I met my wife-to-be for the first time at Nas Cafe. I was supposed to be meeting her there with the dog. And then she didn't turn up. And the next time I met her was outside the CCI club. Because I had to find a location when she was nearby. Again, with my dog in, in the car. So I think she fell in love with me because I had the dog. So what you're saying is correct. Because there's no way she would fall in love without the dog. I mean, to the max. There's no way. It's not... Silver, you've opened a very interesting thing here. I'm going to check with all my pals now. When you met Rajeshri, did was there a dog nearby? I mean, you don't even own a dog. Nikhil, did you have a dog walking by when she saw you for the first time? So yeah, really. no yeah. dog is true love. If there was no dog, there is true love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, there, there were right? a couple more funny ones that you had mentioned that we would get into. I can't remember. Uh, there was no Topics. other funny ones. Uh, but, there's one kind of somber one, but the outcome is very bizarre. Okay, the the reasoning of oh. behind why it happened is very bizarre. Okay, uh, straight out the bat, this is about a, someone committing suicide. Okay, but the reason behind it is very bizarre. I told uh, them it's going to be a little man, irreverent show, and there'll be no heaviness today. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, no, no, it's still slightly. It could, okay, we'll just go ahead. We will story. find uh, in the blackness of the sentence humor. On somebody's yeah, yeah. life, we will stand up and find yes. him. Okay, go on. I mean, yeah, it's uh, yeah. This is I all because of in the past. Of people listening, yeah. this boy is traumatized. <laughs> Please so, keep dog in picture, uh, including DP. Uh. Yeah. So a Tamil Nadu man uh, ended up committing suicide, ended his life to fulfill uh, his vow to God after getting a job. So basically, he committed suicide as a tribute to God, as a sacrifice, because he got a job. So that was the reason okay, as to why uh, he came to Because There's he had no said to go further okay. with this. I need yeah. a minute to myself because this is this is this is this is, kind of dark, this, yes. yeah. this is genius. Kind of dark, this is, but it but is but it's, it's genius. It's such a bizarre story. Like after get immediately after getting a job, this guy is like, okay, I had promised God I would sacrifice myself. I got a job. <sighs> This is a very strong shot in the arm for religion and pushing <laughs> the envelope towards the more religious uh, zealots <laughs> out there. I mean, I mean, this but, is it. The guy, I mean, he's done everything right in his life. He gets to the, yeah. you know, the top of the tree and then boom. Uh, oh my clearly, God. clearly, clearly a student of logic. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it's amazing how the most intelligent of people across the world sometimes do these really stupid things in the name of religion. I mean, this is beyond stupid, but there's obviously like some sort of mental issue, if you ask me. Like, how do you explain it? But but people do really silly things anyway. Yeah. You know, uh, I, mean, I mean, you've got your IIT degree and this and that. You're running an MNC or Hughes and whatever. But yet, you know, if a black cat uh, passes, crosses by or whatever, you're worried. And you know, there's all irrational thought also in us. I mean, I do it myself. I'm not like I don't do it. So mm-hmm. let's face it. There, There's a... What do you think, Amit? There's no one who's so rational, absolutely rational. And no, religion so is rational. probably irrational because we discussed this. Right. Religion, religious yeah. thought doesn't make sense beyond a point. So rationality is a matter of perspective, right? In the sense that what is rational to person A is not necessarily rational to person B, right? Uh, I think the way that... Uh, so I've been listening to a lot of podcasts around mental models and stuff like that, right? And when they're talking about mental models, they talk about both the positive ones and the negative ones. Sorry, okay. you, you want to say something? No, no, that's right. That's perspective. That's, yeah. To our first argument. I'm okay Correct, with that. Right. So, yeah, so there are mental models which basically are mental models which are inhibiting your ability to think in ways which are uh, presumed rational, right? There are also mental models which help you think about ways to look at rationality. And the same mental model can basically do both can lead you down like uh, the wrong path and can lead you the right path, right? So when I was listening to this, the example they gave was Occam's Razor, right? Which is something I'm, I think we're all familiar with, the idea that the simplest uh, the, the simplest uh, possibility is most likely I'm the correct possibility. Huh. Go on. Okay. 
no so basically the idea is that like you know uh, so uh, well, uh, I shouted at Antrix today for whatever reason right <gasps> uh, the no, no, I, we, this did not happen. I'm just making something up. I'm trying to figure out like a way oh. to kind of demonstrate the this. Yeah, we have uh, had two good stories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's say for whatever reason I shouted on yeah. Twitch today, right? The uh, Antre, uh, for somebody who is looking at this, the assumption might be that I was sitting in my room, somebody stepped on my toe, I was really irritated. Because of that, I went out. When I went out, I saw Antrix first and I started shouting. That's one way of looking at it. So now your reasoning goes through this long chain, right? The other way of looking at it is Antrix did something wrong and I shouted at him, right? Which is a simpler kind of this, right? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to come down to the simplest explanation for a cause and effect. And that is probably true. But the, the truth is that sometimes no, that's completely wrong. It's probably huh? true in the sense that eighty percent of the reason is that impulse that exactly. happened then. But uh, huh. why you can't dis? That's the whole thing of psychiatry. At the end of the day, you, know? you cannot disassociate yeah. the past. If you could, it's there when you're subconscious or not in your conscious conscious, but it's there somewhere, right? Hence, because the guy stepped on your foot, even though that's out of your mind and your conscious, when there's irritation that's happened, that irritation stays there in the pocket, and then it adds up to the eighty percent irritation that you got from him. But the twenty percent catalyst came from there, and boom. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, I'm putting it out there. But I want to just yeah. go back to my simple question always, which is if God created everything, right? God created everything. The mountains, the streams, we don't have anything. Who created God? How did God get created? You see, the, the genesis God. of this is all... No, 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 no. This is very important. The origin of the species, so to speak. Nobody ever gets into that. So how does that happen? He creates himself mm -hmm. or herself? Or... Take your time. This is a fundamental, uh, like, it's one of the fundamental tenets of why atheism is a thing, right? Because if, uh, the, the, when you ask the question, the only answer is man created God. If man created God, God is a construct. God is not a being. If God is to be a being, You're singing my that song. That that's what that's, I do. I, I have said, I, this is, I, I, I have maintained this when for many, my, many, many years. When my erudite young son, you know, well, not even potty trained, asked me who is God's mother. And from there huh. we took off, you know, about the God's mother thing and the origin of what the origin origin is. As in, what is the base? You know, where, where do we have, give me the base. How does base happen? That actual thought, and you can go metaphysical as you want, is just not possible. It just doesn't seem to have a fundamental well, logic to it. How does that uh, base so happen? I have one explanation. So, when God created everything, he also created time. Okay. So now once you create time, you can go back in time and create yourself. Because you can create, you have the power to create. So he created but how did, but how did the God who created, created himself time, in the first point? Yes, dude, yes, you, do, you want to get into you want to get into time, uh, you want to get into time travel paradoxes dude, with me, dude? You can insult <laughs> India as much as you want. You can abuse religion. But how dare you talk about time travel like you know it? God okay, this is convenient, man. Always Royston. existed. Royston <laughs> yeah. has given us, but he's given us the most convenient cheek, answer. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, should we go to the <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah. let's do yeah. it. All right. Uh, the first one comes in from Somit Ayer. He says, "Will Cyrus continue to watch the remainder of the T20 World Cup? And if he is, then Pack versus well, Australia. Who is supporting?" Well, I, I did. I had to do the commentary for the first time in my life. Actually, proper commentary uh, for oh, yeah, how's that? Yeah. It was great for oh, me. What did you do? And in Hindi, Who do you do commentary for? So it's a website called Glance. Uh, okay. Glance, like leg like glance. And so basically, so ah. what they do is you, you watch because they don't have the rights. But this seems to be ah. a thing a lot of people are trying. So you don't it, it, watch. It does sound, whatever, yeah. huh. And then you do the commentary with, so we had two sets. Uh, Tom Alter's ah. son, Jamie. Uh, I shouldn't call him that. He's a sports writer in his own. Haven't we had him on the podcast? We should have him on the podcast. We haven't. Very interesting I don't guy. think we have, yeah. Speaks Chase Urdu like his dad. And looks like ah. anybody from the streets of, uh, you know, uh, well, New York. <laughs> somewhere. Uh, not to give it any sort of race. That's a lovely guy. Uh, so he was there and he loves his cricket and there's a guy called Chetan Narula who's quite well known actually. Journalist type and a couple of other guys and so whatever. So you do a roster properly and, and the thing is I've seen Mikhail watching some football stuff like this where big ordinary, it's like you're on the yeah. bar. Na? So ordinary people are having ordinary conversation and, and, and telly commentary, you don't have to go ball by ball uh, right arm over the wicket or it's not right. that really. Na? You're just watching you're having the game fun, and discussing yeah. it. You're having fun. So yeah, so, the more time we spend, the more fun we had. And we really had a good time. Hmm, so, interesting. Yeah. So there's a they do the same thing so in the NBA on one of the uh so there's a like you know 
uh, so they get decent numbers. So, so what happens on the NBA app, right, is once a week there is a game which is commentated by uh, Nate Duncan and Duncan Luru. These are two podcasters, NBA podcasters, who, but they are very technical podcasters, right? So they talk about like, oh, this pick and roll happened because of that. This person was able to slide this way. So they do it like in a very kind of, uh, like, you know, very nitty gritty technical kind of way, which is mm. not what you get on your normal so broadcast, which is meant for everybody. Uh, basketball not to yeah. follow. Right, so exactly. This is so opposite. I enjoy that. This I learned opposite, from it. Right, I think uh, it's huh. like for anyone to sort of follow because we, it's, huh. it's like you, it's not Harsha Bhogle and Nasir Hussain and Sunil Gavaskar and that kind of thing. It's just three right. guys. Although one of them is a sports commentator for now, and one of them is a sports journalist or whatever, but it's just slightly, you know, uh, we're just regular people having a conversation, generally speaking. No one's trying to act, you know, and and you're punting half the time. This will happen. This won't happen. I presume this will happen. I think you yeah. know because we're Indians and we love combinations and permutations in our genes. So it was fun. It was good fun. The only worry, yeah. of course, was uh, my Wi-Fi because I had to do it from upstairs because the sound was really hey, bad. Hey, sec. This was sorry. I'm just saying this was Samsung Glance Live. So this was Glance, isn't like the software Glance, not like the website. Glance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. That's cool. The, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Call something else. I should pay attention. Yeah, no, I know. I, 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 I know that we're actually engaged. But we're on uh, on Sunday. Talking. Please, you can watch us on Sunday at seven. I shall do that. The finals take off. But uh, to okay. answer the question, uh, listen, I'm a. But you need a Samsung to watch it. I'm not a jingoistic, huh? You need a Samsung um, phone or a Xiaomi phone to watch it, right? Can I fill you in with details have... once I talk to Costa? Because, you know, I'm <laughs> okay. just right. the talking. I mean, didn't pay attention to much of that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's some sort of a, a Bitcoin side effect to it as well. But uh, just to say quickly, and I, uh, Amit, I think you're the same because you love the game. And although you have your huh. uh, favorites in the NBA, you'll watch others play. So, I think uh, real cricket lovers, real, real football lovers, we don't just watch us. There, there are two types of uh, sports yeah. nuts. Ones who only follow their team. But we don't just follow our team. We do follow our team more than anything else. But we follow other teams as well. So I don't have yep. a problem. India's lost. India's lost. I still watch the cricket. It was a cracker right. of a match yesterday. It'll be a cracker of a match in a in a bit now. Australia, Pakistan. I feel so, bro. I'm watching. Mm. And Australia is our, our team. We support Australia. We're, we are, have Australian accents from time to time, and we're sitting in the bucket uh, and having a bath. Uh, me and old Mickey, and uh, not anymore because he's I team. So Would look pretty I vulgar. picked a favorite new second uh, fav- second favorite new NBA team. Uh, just like last couple of weeks. Oh, like, that's a sign the, of insecurity. That's the no, guy who loses confidence in his first team. We also no, have so my that. First, no, no, I like my first team and I'm, I'm going to root for my first team no matter what. But my first team is an eastern side team and I always root for somebody on the western side. It's been the Golden State Warriors for the longest time. But I recently flipped to the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, where so they have become the my Memphis, uh, Whatever the hell they are, play uh, the Golden State Warriors, you then go with Memphis. I'll go with Memphis. But my, my, my Western Conference team is not important to me. It's just something that... So what happens is Eastern Conference games start at 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning. Western Conference mm-hmm. games start at 7, 7.30 in the morning. So I'm more able to watch those on a regular basis, right? This is the Gujarati then, at work. It's just, there's a logic to it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. It's not just emotional. But, no, but what made you change? But, what made you uh, change? John Morant, what a player. What a player, mm-hmm. man. I mean, like... I think he told us about him uh, uh, a couple of months okay. back. Yeah. yeah, just what a player, man. I mean, like... Uh, so one man influences he, your change to a team, huh? That's a lot. It, well, I was watching huh. Golden State because of Steph Curry. So now I'm watching uh, Memphis and the other because Curry, of Seth Curry? Seth Curry is part of the Philadelphia 76ers, my first team. You play for separate, separate teams? Two brothers torn uh, apart? By yes, war? they are. <laughs> yes, oh, they are. Outside. Yeah. Yes, but but this this thing of having a second team, especially when you uh, for us Indians who don't have uh, any dog in the fight when it comes to football, World Cups, FIFA, World Cups, we all have a who's your best team, who's your second team. We all have that, you know, for some reason. Yeah. Uh, but in cricket, huh. I've always supported West Indies growing up. I still support yeah. them. But they just don't win anything anymore, very rarely. And my son loved Australia, so and my dad, I don't know if there's genetic blueprint, loved the Badman's Invincibles '48 team and all that. I had all those posters. So we the Indian cricket nut is much more than an India nut. You know, this is India, of course, inside, outside, but you, you talk about when I watch, they love when I watch cricketers. When I, uh, when, when I watch cricket regularly, I used to love uh, Sri Lanka because I used to watch cricket regularly way back when, right? And Sri Lanka became like good all of a sudden, right? Arjuna, Rana, Tunga, Jaz, uh, Fabulous. Uh, I don't know, yeah. by 95, they went to Australia, played really well in a one-day game. This guy turned up, Jay Surya, Jay Surya, reinvented yeah. the game. And a small exactly. island with no money, nothing, and punching yeah. against these big heavyweights like 1.3 billion India, 300 odd million Pakistan, you know, 70 odd million England with all their culture and history, Australia, blah, 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 West Indies. And then this small island with all the intern yeah. design warfare and this and that. So, again, a good romance with that story. I, was, I love Sri Lanka. I love Sri Lanka as a country. I, I, could, yeah. I could go there. 
if they give me citizenship, I would really consider it. Only I wouldn't want the long names. Because I'm wondering if yeah. I call someone with a full long name, it takes so long sometimes. What if it's an so emergency? If, if, Hello, Dr. <laughs> Rumesh, <laughs> I a, and you know, the guy's dead. Because if, if you were Dr. Singh, I could have saved him. But because of the two more syllables, I lost my guy. Please, I love you. Really do. Uh, so I I used to uh, like I rooted for them for everybody against uh, everybody except India until they got really good. And who right? beat us? And they got 96? really good really fast. Who beat us in '96? Yeah, that's what they won in '96. So you were torn asunder like, no again. Longer. Oh, no longer. It. Go I away. Tumbly and all cried and uh, all that. Yeah. <laughs> well before, Siri, you were having baths in those days because that was <laughs> yes. bath. This is '96. Um, no '96. No, I think I was like too young. Too young. Like, too young. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amit, were you ever into uh, other American sports like baseball or American football? Did you ever get? Uh, so I was into American football quite deeply. Uh, I can't but then what? It. The, so I'll tell I you. Mean, they they, the they fight for one yard, Amit. Yeah. Well, I was trying to explain to you know, when I was in New York. Listen, I was like, you know, for one yard, two yards, this whole thing is for one it's, yard. But it's yeah, how it's, we it, Indians fight over property. You know, you it's, 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 it's a. a it's a really fun sport to watch. Honestly, it's more fun sport. It's a more fun sport to watch than the NBA is. But I'll tell you what the problem is: nobody in India follows it, so I have mm. nobody to talk with it about at all. It's 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 uh, it, 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 it just gets boring, right? And especially if your team is not doing any is not doing particularly well. And I have a specific team in in, in football. Who? Then uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm from Philadelphia, right? So all the Philadelphia right. teams. You're a Philly boy. Hey, well, how do you rate that sandwich up for all that? The cheesesteak. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I would say that the most popular ones suck, but there are some really good Philly cheesesteaks. Like there's Pats and Geno's, which are considered Philly's, to be the Philly cheesesteak uh, is better than anywhere else where you get the Philly cheesesteak. We even get it here uh, in Indigo. Well, so it, it depends, right? I mean, like uh, in Indigo, you don't get a real Philly cheesesteak. Uh, That's no problem. Yeah. So uh, the, and 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 the thing is this, right? Most places which uh, they don't. So a cheesesteak is thin. Like the the steak is so, super thin. Oh, mm. I thought it was the reverse. There were two or three uh, layers of meat. No, no, no. And it's garnish really, with lots really of pickles thin. and lettuce and all that. No, so there are lots of pickles. And so that's what it's not real, right? So in Philadelphia, when you get a Philly cheese steak, this is what it has. It has bread. It has cheese. It has the steak, which is really thin and then uh, put over a, uh, what do you call it? A grill, right? And then on top of that, you have more cheese or you can have cheese whiz. Right, basically that cheese sauce type thing, sauce. and that's what mm. that's all it is. So then every other Philly cheese steak does its own thing. It's got nothing to do with the Philly cheese steak. Yeah, Where we I, I mean, like yeah, so, yeah, cheese so, sorry, steak. Fried, fried onions. I forgot fried onions. Fried onions are are are, 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 are key. Very point. important for a new uh, budding chef. Fried onions and pickles really make uh, continental Man, food. Man, they're for great. Me. Yeah, they just give them, yeah. the continental food what they yeah. what can't get because they don't have our masala and spice and all that. But they get a bit of that. I'm feeling hungry now already. Six fifty two. I don't think I have Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, one small other thing, Amit. Uh, do you uh, are, there, are there other countries outside America where American football is popular though? Like other, you said, India no. may nobody watches it. There was no. a uh, there's a Canadian Canada. football league, yeah. but it's not very popular. Right? Not compared oh. to hockey. Not Japan loves to baseball. Not so baseball, to baseball has been moved to Japan and baseball, Cuba. Yeah. Cuba loves it's baseball. South, South, South America, America the West baseball. Indies also. There's yeah. a little bit of baseball is there. There's so a lot of baseball is... all over South yeah. America and West Indies. Uh, mm -hmm. the, but NFL, no, there's nowhere else. Ice hockey is also only America and Canada. There is yeah. uh, European ice hockey. Hey, hey, to be honest, hockey. to be honest, that's also because a lot of the countries are in tropical areas. Okay, we can't play oh, ice yeah. hockey for God's sake. You come to Mahim exactly. with me tomorrow, we'll bring our sticks, yep. carry ice, so let's do our best. <laughs> that's not fair. Agreed, yeah. agreed, agreed, agreed. I mean, like, it is a, it, it's a issue. But then, uh, jingoism for their club. What is the right word? Not club. What do you want to call these teams? Uh, fanaticism clubs, exactly. for the, the teams. For, for, for their teams. franchise. For their franchise. Yeah. Is fanaticism. And it's again like Democrat Republic. They actually go down generations. I yeah. follow Philadelphia uh, uh, Sixers or whatever because of my father and grandfather. I mean, I've, I've had these conversations in bars with people. And I'm are. amazed that they And they get really excited. You talk about dog people loving each other. Or people who smoke getting to, uh, you know, having some kindred spirit. This is huge. Yeah. City team, and then very often they're not from that state also, and they all like that team, and then boom, they bond. Very it's a uh, it's tribalism, right? We've spoken about this last year. Yesterday yeah, we were yeah. talking about this. It's tribalism, but, right? It's the but, it, but it's but it's sporty tribalism. So it's you know it's, it's sporty. It's hopefully uh, harmless. You it's know, tribalism like a, like a on game. such a narrow, yeah. on such a narrow topic, right? That is harmless tribalism, right? When tribalism starts encompassing all issues, then it becomes problematic, right? But where it's only like, hey, this guy is a great player versus somebody saying, no, this guy sucks and you should trade him. 
when is that tribalism? It's not important. Who created God? Or how did God create himself? Explain that process to me. Before the mountains and the streams and the oceans and the sunshine and the little children playing in the rain, all that. Uh, next question. Did, did a time right. travel thing just happen right now? No, no, no. I just want to come back to that question. <laughs> that, that question is the basis of a lot of... So either you follow the logical path or you don't deep down. And you cannot deny yourself in your, in your subconscious also. There's some sense of logic or a sense of like, I don't understand anything, so I'll accept it. That, that type of thinking, which is very strong, and a lot of people, they almost have a laziness to do that. You know, I don't understand, so maybe this is the this is what I feel. But, but that's I, I I think that's true for many people, right? I, there are people who study religion deeply, right? But at the same time, a lot of people just do whatever the hell they want. But they won't give you proper answers. You know, either they yeah. get angry and shoot you, or you know, these are, I wish we could. This was Akbar allowed in uh, Dini Lahi and trying to create that whole darbar where they would have actually have, and he used to have these debates, and he would laugh his head off. Uh, if one religious uh, zealot would denounce the other and win that debate on the oh. strains of some sort of logic. I won't name different, but he he really had a good time. What a naughty boy he was. Okay, next one. All right. Next one comes in from Pradeep Pillai. Uh, this is a great one. He says, as last two CNB uh, episodes started with toilet talks, how do you utilize the time in lieu apart from answering nature's call? Is it A, newspaper, B, mobile, C, laptop, or D, something? Well, we discussed this in the pandemic. Lou became very important because you can't get away from people otherwise. There was no outlet. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people were spending more time in the Lou just to get their personal space. Not The Lou was the only option. Um, but we share Lou's now because mine is a joint family. And my wife went and broke one Lou down to make one big Lou. So what happens is, you know, half the time I mean, Dad, you're in now. Get out. This is the conversation. You know, and then my pee <laughs> freezes or whatever else freezes and I have to put my clothes back on and go out and wait as a loser. It's it's painful. It, I think a dormitory experience would have been good for me. It would have prepared me for this. <laughs> the bully. The bully takes the bucket. You're about to start and the bully comes as my turn. Uh, did that happen? Did that happen? The, the, the bullies would come and take the bucket. did get bullied. Time. Yes, we did get bullied all the time. No, oh, I, I feel like the seniors so, would take the bucket, take the mark, that kind of thing. And, you know, the junior would just have to... That's it. Uh, that's the long it, Like, that did happen in the first two months. But then after that, you just become friends with the seniors also because they're the same dormitory. And then that stops happening. So, can, uh, can I ask you a question? Does bullying in uh, in boarding schools happen across classes? Like, as in ninth standard, 10th standard? Or does it happen, like, within the ninth standard? Like, uh, so it's seniors, it's, juniors? They're, or they're just... different. Yeah, seniors to juniors also. All, there's also house to house. So, I would, okay. like, Shivaji house, which is the equivalent of yellow house. And uh, the people from Tilak House, because they were like, I don't know, bigger than us or like stronger than us in whatever way, they used to bully our house. And our, my entire dorm used to get bullied when it was very funny, but very sad. <laughs> but yeah, it's what it is. <laughs> but there was, there was an age thing. That house just was more dominant. No, no, there was an age thing also. It. Like so, uh, the 11th and 12th uh, students rule the school. Uh, hmm. At least it was in my time. I'm sure like they have tried to crack down on bullying. Oh, the world, Jenny, the because... seniors are the ones doing yeah. the ranking. No, that's what you have to understand. You're thinking yeah. that the one house picks on the other house is really different. So that, that also, that also. So basically, there were like different types of uh, bullying. There was like the 11th and 12th rule the school. You they ask you to do basically they tell you to do something. You have to do it. There's no way you're not doing it. And uh, if uh, and then there was like some cross house bullying also. Uh, it's just. Yeah, a lot of levels. Yeah, I've discussed this before on some podcasts. I just had to in Xavier's. They made me swim on the floor because they asked me, "What do you, what, do, what sports <laughs> do you do?" And I said, "I'm a swimmer." Oh yeah, so I remember swim. this. Yeah, no, and, and you know, I was, I thought it was pretty cool. What's the big deal? And I went on the floor, and huh. then suddenly, just how stupid it is. You're lying on the floor trying to breaststroke with your knees up and your hands up, and they're all looking at you, and they're saying, "Go faster!" You know how guys are quite funny. It's <laughs> more funny than mean. Uh, faster, shara, shara, come on, faster, faster, last length, last length. And they do shit like that. So, yeah. <laughs> But I think yeah. if you can't handle it, you know, then it can go down because people are just different. And then yeah. it can become very physical and aggressive. And some people are just very sensitive. Ah, personally speaking, it didn't bother me at all. And in fact, I made good friends with uh, the seniors after that. Yeah, it's it's a it, weird one, right? Right. Uh, right of passage. I, I'm, not, I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying it becomes like a right of passage. 90% of the time, that's all it is. Yeah. But then there are definitely the horror stories that I've read and seen. Uh, I mean, there, kid, there are people who go take this shit too far. You can't kick a guy in, uh, in the mouth and ass and, you know, put his head yeah. in the bucket of water and make him uh, on the toilet and all. I mean, there, there's a limit, right? I mean, swimming is just creatively stupid. Nothing more. No. And, uh, so I, I, you I, beaten? I, so really, did they physically I, assault you? I did get, I did get into fights. Uh... And I got, I, from you getting bullied physically by them. No, like, no, no. They, they, no that didn't hit you. I, I got beat up by my teachers, by the way. It's so common in boarding schools to get beat up by teachers. It I is think super that's a good thing. Common. 
Okay, I, sure. I, no, it's not. What, do you remember <laughs> okay. why? Okay, but this is funny. This is funny oh. though. Uh, so I was w- unwell one day. Okay, one day, I, well, entire day, I was unwell. So I I hadn't gone for the games period. So like there's a, like four to five p.m. in the evening. We have to compulsorily go out and play in boarding school because they don't want you getting fat in boarding school. Uh, because then you'll eat more and then they have to give you more anda curry and nobody wants so that. They said to make you yeah. more manly and you didn't like yeah. sport. Now you explained all that to us before. <laughs> no, no. But, but... <laughs> Even for your stand up, all that. But just tell us what happened running out of yeah, time. Yeah. So so uh they uh so I didn't go for games period this one day because I was unwell okay and uh, this teacher came and started like uh basically like hitting me and scolding me okay why aren't you playing so, like catching my collar and all okay like roughly and then oh. I fainted and this guy freaked out he thought he just killed a student <laughs> but he, <laughs> but like, it wasn't because of your blood sugar level was low so you I was actually That's unwell yeah level. I was actually unwell and then I fainted uh, but 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 he caught you and he slapped you also or just caught you He actually just like roughed me up, like like shook my collar and all the front and back. School, that was allowed, wasn't it? I, I don't. I know. mean, it was all allowed. We got like yeah. smacked in the bum with like branches and all, also by our teachers. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's also Did, a thing. What about the the one gay kid who says, "Can I have that again, please?" Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Again, we're 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 not bigots. We we just like all a good right. joke. Uh, all right. Okay. Save me, Amit. Where's the disclaimer here? <laughs> we spoke too soon. We're not in the bar. This is the cricket, cricket show that we do is a bit like this. Once you loosen up, you you say all kinds of terrible things. But it's like when you and your mates are hanging out in a bar or a restaurant or a house. You say shit, yeah. Watching a game, yeah. It's also a lot of fun for people around, you know, because that's half the fun is there and half the fun is in the audience. Hmm. Um, I would True. think, yeah. Okay, let's do one or two quickly. Yeah, yeah let's do one. Right. Next one uh, comes from Feral Mind. He says, "Did you guys read about the first no caste, no religion certificate that was issued recently to a woman lawyer from Tamil Nadu?" Wow! Did you guys hear about this? And it had to be Tamil Nadu. Really excellent. Yeah. I want one. How do I get this? That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. But let's get on the show. Woman lawyer. Yeah, yeah we, we should. Let's find out. Let's get on the show. Get, yeah, we should. Feral. Let's try and get on the show. Can I call you Fair? <laughs> Where can you please get this lady? Give us some. Yeah, absolutely. We'll uh, so uh, her name is uh, Sneha, the first Indian to receive no caste, no religion certificate. Uh, she's an advocate from Tamil Nadu. Wow. Uh, who so officially doesn't belong to any caste or religion? So she no, she officially does not belong to any caste or religion. So and she was able to get that certificate, which I the certificate one, has never been issued before. This I want instance. one ASAP. I think this yeah. is something. Yeah. Is there such a thing as a caste certificate? I don't. It took her nine years to get one. Says Feral Mind. It's not an easy ah, so thing. There you go. Well, there must be. We so just don't have it. Doesn't mean there isn't. I had a friend in college. Uh, hmm. So you know how when you're filling uh, like Hindu, Muslim, many forms have it. No, yeah. that's a communal caste. Is actual caste is mentioned. No, no, no. I'm talking about uh, a, when you're form. filling like a school forms, right? They they would ask community. Me, like, uh, community is mentioned. We uh, put religion. Uh, they would ask me. No, we had religion at least. I remember yeah, having. We, we also have it, and we have put any all the time. My friend. And his entire school life had always written humanitarian in that uh, compartment, you know. But that's horrible that's because so that means everybody cool. else is not. That, that, yeah, that's, that's what exactly for. what it means. <laughs> <laughs> no, because his Hindu, his dad was a, uh, I think Hindu, and his mom was Muslim. Uh, so he was just like. I'm, But be that as I'm it may, like why should he choose uh, to uh, identify himself as a religious person? Absolutely, with a Absolutely. religious identity. Yeah. I I think that yeah. that's something personal. If you want to do it, it should never be something that's brandished. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. and answer my question about who created God, and then we can discuss this further. Otherwise, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk. About this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's somebody's put a Twitter inside the chat. Chat. Twitter inside the chat. Her her Twitter her Twitter handle inside the chat. Oh, okay. Rose Tiki. Yeah. Just just, just, just keep it and like you know. Okay. Just touch great. Photo, cool. Photo, yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, okay. Let's get it. Let's get it. It's been great. Absolutely fantastic! How she got it and everything else, and then we can follow her path. Now, this lady should be the next member of parliament. You can see a leader here, the real leader for India, for change, for everything else. Why do these people lead the country? I don't know. The present leaders are very good. I'm not criticizing them. Done great stuff. Yeah, go on. Uh, Arjun R has a great, great question uh, or great comment. He says, "Hey, Cyrus." Uh, me and my girlfriend play a drinking game while watching your podcast. We take a shot every time you say percentile, egalitarian, Machiavellian. <laughs> <laughs> She died of liver cirrhosis last week. <laughs> oh, what can I say? Uh, the percentile of that happening, if I could get into it for a little while, is quite high at any given time. My God, it's very scary if they actually dissect our show and remember every little thing like that. Uh, yeah, liver cirrhosis is little... easy, easy to die from, but. Uh, It takes a long time. It's very painful death. So, uh, well, 
I suppose you look at it as a lucky break and move on to the next. Uh, stay with our podcast. Go to the next. Arjun, you. Oh God! <laughs> this is like the serial killers that I've been, you know, on YouTube that I'm going through. I mean, the stories are, you know, some of them they they scary. Because the fantasy level is just not ordinary from any It's, angle. Yeah, people yeah. just say whatever they think. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, should we pack yeah. up before more people's girlfriends die? I don't want all this happening on my watch. For God's sake, no! As an egalitarian, I want to keep everybody equal here for the rest of our lives. Uh, uh, but uh, the last thing to be said: if anybody knows, if anybody out there knows uh, how God was formed before God, the pre-God era. I want the pre-God era. Give me that. I mean, is that fair? We, sure. Out there. Nobody the pre-God era. Seen. By pre-God era, you mean like basically older than ten thousand BC. <laughs> a little older than that, but but uh, Google, I tried, huh? but the, the answers were, you know, no, very I mean, not this, listen, If we are, if we believe that man, God is a manifestation of man, and man's civilization, civilization as we know it, started around ten thousand BC. No, no, God created the prehistoric animals and the flora and fauna and all, so it goes back millions of years. So let's go all the way back there. It depends on the Then religion. Before, no? So there was nothing. Let's say shunya ka nothingness, <coughs> so, whatever the word is. So there's nothingness in the bleak so that's blackness of nothing. Right? No, everything, in, everything. There's nothing. No, and dude. God turns Catholicism up. is six thousand years ago, dude, and then God created life. Okay, I'll just check the Bible. I'll check the exact date. But now yeah. I don't want to start a religious war for God's sake. I mean, Doshi, I'm taking me as generic as possible and not pick on any one because all of them owe me answers. And the answer is yes. Well, how and when was God formed? And before that, whether you want to go millions of years, give me a date. I don't care. Give me what happened pre. Well, the, so before 2014 says be sick. I really, we we really are getting the audience we deserve. It's very clear. <laughs> okay, bye guys. See you tomorrow. Ah, uh, back to cricket. Is this really? You, you think that's really uh, uh, Chahal? No, no, it's not. Uh, it's no, not. No, no, it's not. Like, can't be the real guy, right? Yeah. Oops. I had a fanboy moment for a second. All right then. See you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.